All right, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of sketching the graph of a rational function. So here I have f of x equals x cubed plus x squared minus 6x, all divided by x cubed plus x squared minus 9x minus 9. So um, because I've already shown how to you know, do all the factoring, get all the important information on these rational functions, I'm going to go ahead and just show you the results here. So in the first step, that we're going to go ahead and factor the numerator and the denominator. So we could take the x out of the numerator. We get x times x squared plus x minus 6. And then we can factor the denominator by grouping. So we get x squared times x plus 1 if we factor the x squared out of this. We factor, we factor the minus 9 out of the next two terms. We get minus 9 times x plus 1. And so here you can see that we fully factor it. So we would get the x plus 1 times x squared minus 9. Um, just go ahead and make that x plus 3, x minus 3. And then x squared plus x minus 6 factors as x plus 3 times x minus 2. So we can see here that uh, the x plus 3s cancel. So that becomes x times x minus 2 divided by x plus 1 times x minus 3. And we end up having a whole at x equals negative 3 since x plus 3 cancels out. Okay, so we... Um, x plus 1 is still in the denominator, so x equals negative 1 is a vertical asymptote. x minus 3 is in the denominator, so x equals 3 is also a vertical asymptote. For the end behavior, because the degree of the numerator is 3 and the degree of the denominator is 3, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote, and the equation of it is the coefficient of the x cubed in the numerator divided by the coefficient of the x cubed in the denominator, so that's, so that's just 1. So y equals 1 is going to be our end behavior asymptote. We can, again, we can say it more specifically as a horizontal asymptote. Um, as I mentioned a bit ago, we're going to have a whole at x equals negative 3 because those two cancel out. And so then to find the y-coordinate, we're going to go ahead and plug negative 3 into this equation right here. So we get negative 3 times negative 3 minus 2 over negative 3 plus 1 times negative 3 minus 3. And that ends up being equal to 5 fourths. So we have a whole at negative 3 comma 5 fourths. All right, so I'm trying to make this not be a very long video since I already covered a lot of these things. So I'm going to save the time for actually getting the graph. Um, the x-intercepts we get by setting the numerator here equal to 0. So x times x minus 2 will be 0 if x equals 0 or if x equals 2. And then, as always, we find the y-intercept by, by substituting 0 in for x. Okay, so we have 0, or let's go, ahead, go ahead and do it here. 0 times 0 minus 2 over 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 3, that's just 0. But furthermore, anytime our x-intercept is 0, our y-intercept has to be 0 as well. All right, so here I have plotted all of the major information. So I have the whole plotted at negative 3 comma 1.25. I have my vertical asymptote of x equals negative 1, x equals 3, and the horizontal asymptote of y is equal to 1. All right, so let me grab a different color here real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and start um, at this part of the graph here. So because this is a vertical asymptote, I know that the behavior is either going to be that it goes up like this or that it goes down like this. But I have to connect whichever one of these it, it actually is, needs to connect so that it follows this horizontal asymptote um, as x goes to infinity. So let's look at what will happen in both of the cases. So for this one, to follow the horizontal asymptote, we would just go kind of just fall and go through here. But for this one, in order to follow that horizontal asymptote, we would actually have to hit the x-axis, creating a, another x-intercept, which we don't have. So this cannot, again, this cannot be the possibility because we're going to cross the x-axis in a place where we shouldn't. So this has to actually be the behavior that we have. Okay, so it's got to go up to infinity as we approach 3 from this right-hand side. And then it's going to fall and just kind of approach 
that horizontal asymptote as x goes to infinity. And now we get to use our multiplicities of the vertical asymptotes. So x equals 3 is a vertical asymptote, which is coming from this x minus 3 in the denominator. And that x minus 3 has a power of 1. So that means that the multiplicity of x equals 3, that vertical asymptote, is 1. Since it's an odd multiplicity, it's going to go in the opposite direction on the other side. Okay, so again, the multiplicity equals 1 implies opposite, opposite directions. So odd multiplicity like we talked about in class we're going to go in opposite directions. So since it's going up on this side, it's got to go down on that side. Right, so it's got to go from here. It's got to connect to that x-intercept. That x-intercept is x equals 2. That has a multiplicity of 1 here, so I know it's just going to cross it. I don't know how high it should go, and I'm not going to require you guys to figure out how high it should go, because um, you know, really, we'd, we would need calculus to find out what that maximum is. But it's going to go up some amount, and then it's going to connect to this x-intercept. That also has multiplicity 1, so it's just going to cross right on through. And then go down to that vertical asymptote. So just like x equals 3 has multiplicity 1, x equals negative 1, that vertical asymptote has multiplicity 1 because the x plus 1 here has multiplicity 1. So it's going to go up to infinity, odd multiplicity, goes opposite directions, goes up to infinity on this side, and has to go through that, not through, but we've got a hole there, so it's going to hit that hole, and then just keep following that um, horizontal asymptote. Okay, so there's a rough sketch of the graph of that rational function. All right, I'm going to do another one with you that has a slant asymptote. All right. So here we have uh, x cubed. I'm not going to go through all the details um, like I did just now. I'm just going to kind of quickly gloss over the pieces of data and then get to the graph. So we have this, this one right here. We're going to go ahead and factor it. It's going to factor like this. So we see that we have a uh, um, vertical asymptote here, here x-intercepts on those places. So just like I was talking about, this is, this is our data here. A vertical asymptote x equals negative a half, x equals 4. In this case, our because the numerator degree is higher than the denominator degree, we know there's no horizontal end behavior, but it is a slant asymptote. So if we do that division of the denominator into it, we can see that y equals 1 half x plus 9 fourths is our slant asymptote. And we have, these are our x-intercepts. It's our y-intercept. This one doesn't have any holes. Okay, so if you need to pause to write this down, go ahead and pause now and write it down. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and continue to get the graph now. All right, so this is everything plotted for you. Um, so here we have our, two, our three x-intercepts in this case um, and our y-intercept, our end behavior slant asymptote, and our two vertical asymptotes. So just like in the last case, I'm going to see whether it should go like this or if it should go like this. And it's basically just like the last case. It can't be this one because in order to be this one, it's going to have to cross the x-axis to follow this end behavior. So it has to be that one because there's no intercept there. So it's going to be this one. All right, so it's gonna fall some amount. We're not gonna we're not gonna really worry about that, but it's gonna fall it's gonna fall by some amount, and then it's gonna start um, increasing again, following that end behavior. Then both of these are a power of one, so I know both both vertical asymptotes have um, odd multiplicity. So since it's going up to infinity in this case, it's gonna go down to negative infinity in this case. Each of these has power of 1, so the graph is going to just go straight through each of its x-intercepts. So it's going to go straight through. I'm going to try to do it carefully so I do it. It's going to go straight through there, 
up some amount, fall back to this other x-intercept, and then go down to negative infinity. Then on the other side of the vertical asymptote, it's got to go up to positive infinity again because that right there has power 1. So it's going to go up to positive infinity. It's going to come down and hit this x-intercept. So it's going to, going to go like that. And then swing back around to follow that end behavior. So um, that's a rough sketch of that one.